Uh, but now for Caleb, um, I'm going to hand over to him for his comprehensive talk on mapping Wi-Fi networks and triggering on interesting traffic patterns. And without further ado, Caleb. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Hello. Um, so as she said, my name is Caleb. Um, I work at Mandiant um, slash FireEye um, on the instant response R&D team. Um, that's my day job. Uh, so if the Mandiant consultants are like ninjas like Uma Thurman, I'm kind of the sword maker who makes their swords. Um, I can't remember what that guy's name is in the movie. Anyone know? Thank you. Vittori <laughs> Hanzo, that's right. Um, so I like fuzzy things in life, um, like the dog, um, but also like fuzzy graphs and math that is fuzzy. Um, I find I like when I have to kind of pull the signal out of the noise. Um, and one of the things I like about that is because if you get into the real world, um, almost everything is fuzzy. So if you're looking at image recognition, text recognition, voice recognition, um, or going out and touching things in the physical world, like with SDR, you have to use mathematics a lot and kind of that fuzzy math. And uh, I come from a programming background, and I think it's cool programming computers and stuff, but it's even more interesting when you can move things around in the physical world and kind of reach out and touch it, at least uh, to myself. Um, so kind of a precursor to this talk or a, something that led up to it, um, you know, I kind of got into IoT stuff before I knew it was called IoT. Um, I did like a um, Raspberry Pi con uh, security system. Um, and. Uh, that was one thing that led me into this talk, and the other was, you know, wireless hacking is, is fun. I've been doing it different kinds for a while. Um, I, used, I used to do the TCP, you know, layer three and four, um, and then I did a little bit with SDR at the lower layer, and then I'm, this talk is kind of on the uh, layer two, the data link. Um, and I kind of ignored this layer for a while, because um, I thought it seemed kind of boring. Um, you know, because the data you get at layer two, at the data link layer, is um, in 802.11, it's roughly this. Uh, you know, you get the source MAC, the destination MAC, the SSID, the frame type, but then the rest of the data is encrypted. Um, so it kind of seemed boring in the past, but then I started looking at it, and you can infer a lot of other interesting data um, if you're tracking over time um, and implying various things. So, you know, like the time is an implied. Um, it's not in the frame. So um, I had this problem initially that led me to thinking about this stuff. Um, I had a, a Canary IP camera, and I have a Wink security system, and they don't talk to each other. And I wanted the, uh, the camera, if it saw motion, it was armed, to trigger the sirens in my security system. But they didn't talk. Um, so I had this problem. And as a Pythonista, you know, if I, I had a fever, and the only prescription was more Python. Um, that's how I usually solve boring things that bore me. Um, and the, uh, the solution was this program I wrote called Tracker Jacker. Um, it's open source. Um, it is uh, also pip installable. Um, and this is the tool that I use to solve that problem. Um, so, my thinking was, let me go to a video. Um, I decided I had to record this because I didn't want to bring my own security system to DEF CON and do a live demo with it and then go back home and plug it into my house. Um, so I videoed this, um, but basically the, the concept was um, since it's an IP camera, if it detects motion, it's going to have to upload that to the cloud. So I can just look for a threshold of bytes. Like half, if I see more than half a megabyte, in 10 seconds, assume that it's uploading a video, which would mean it's um, probably detected motion. Um, and from there, I was able to call this script to then trigger my sirens. So this is kind of the um, proof of concept with that. So I'm going to just, I don't think we have good sound. So this is the siren. Um, and then this is the camera that doesn't talk to each other. Um, so basically, I move into the camera's field of view, and you'll see the uh, Tracker Jacker program print something. And then right after that, you'll see the siren go off. So 
so that was, that was kind of my proof of concept and made me pretty excited. Um, but something about it also kind of freaked me out because I realized um, you know, I didn't even have to be on the wireless network to detect that. You know, I could, um, I could, I could just, because uh, you're in monitor mode, so you're not connected to the network. So conceivably, if I had a neighbor and they were doing this, or, or if it were me and I had a neighbor, I could probably see if they have any IP cameras. You know, I could look at their MAC address and from that ascertain, you know, with the probability, you know, maybe if it's um, Nest, it might be a camera. Um, well, you could see if that's detecting motion, even if you're not in the same house, even if you're not connected to that network. Um, so that was, um, that was kind of an interesting surprise. Um, a little side note with that, um, I actually, I was testing this out with this camera, and um, I started noticing it was detecting motion where I was getting triggers even when it was unarmed. The camera was in, in home mode. And that was a little freaky, um, because in theory, if it's in home mode, it's not recording video, but it turned out it was. I, I didn't call them out, though, um, because they actually had a setting to disable that. But it seemed a little bit gray, kind of, to me. Um, let's see. So I want to actually, sh actually show you Tracker Jacker in the live. Uh, so it's running right here on my Ubuntu VM. Um, and so this, this is um, performing one of the Tracker Jacker has two kind of parts. Uh, one is the mapping functionality. The other is this trigger functionality. So like triggering the security camera is the trigger functionality. Um, but um, the mapping functionality is, uh, it basically maps out, it scans every channel, and it captures basically all the packets it can. And it builds the relationship map between every access point. So it lists everyone on every channel. Um, and then it shows every, um, well, let me show you the data. So I've been scanning here at Recon Village. Um, so it shows you every SSID, and then under that, each node in that network, so each BSSID. And then under each BSSID, you see all the devices connected to that. So it's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of like in-map, but for the wireless uh, radio waves. Um, it, because it'll build, you know, every relationship that, that it sees. Um, and, you know, you get the, uh, the vendor, if it's there, uh, the signal strength, the bytes received, all that kind of stuff. So you can really get a, good, get a good idea of what's on every network and are they active, you know. Um, so that's, that's kind of, you know, that, that was solving, solving a problem that I saw because I didn't see a good way with and many other tools to get that exhaustive list, at least in a nice format, maybe in a GUI. But that was kind of a motivation. So um, a little bit real quick on how, how this works from a radio perspective. Um, so a few basic things I probably most people know. Well, let me ask, uh, how many of you are familiar with um, 802.11? OK, yeah, OK, well, let's go over it brief briefly then. Uh, so you know you have these various channels, uh, channel one, channel six, channel eleven, and those simply correspond to uh, radio frequencies, um, to predefined radio frequencies. Um, and so you have your you know your 2.4 gigahertz range channels, um, and then you have your five gigahertz range channels. Um, obviously, the radio it's just radio. I, I recently was doing a lot of ham radio stuff and layer two stuff or layer one stuff. And so coming back and looking at Wi-Fi, it was interesting to think of it as kind of just radio, you know. Um, and ultimately, uh, a note about the monitor mode. Um, so you, you may be familiar with promiscuous mode, where you could do this on, if you're on a network and you want to just say, give me all the traffic I see. Um, by, you know, normally, it filters out frames that are not for your MAC address. But with promiscuous mode, you can say, give me everything that you see. Um, monitor mode is a little different than that, and I wanted to clarify. Uh, so monitor mode, you, uh, you basically put your adapter into uh, pretty much pure radio mode, um, and it receives, every, it receives frames from every network um, 
on that particular channel that it's on. And so it's not associated with any, with any uh, Wi-Fi network or anything like that. And it, can re and it can receive from all of them. So um, another demo I wanted to show, I wanted to give an idea of um, the plugin system a little bit. Um, so I've got this pretty sweet plugin system, and it's um, so it's just very simple Python code. Let me make that bigger. Uh, so this is what a plugin looks like. Um, so you basically just have. Uh, let me ask this: How many people here know basic Python programming? Okay, maybe forty percent. Um, so. For those who know Python, uh, the plugin API is really nice. You can you write, you know, there's no inheritance or anything like that. There's just uh, you have your top level class called trigger, and you have an init method and a call method. And basically, all of the various metadata or data about every packet is call is put into this function. So the device ID is like the MAC address. Um, the vendor would be like Apple. Um, you know the the interface it was on, uh, the power level. Um, and so you can take that in your Python code and just write all kinds of various um, plugins. So one example, okay, I'll start with this one. Uh, so again, these are kind of to, uh, to respond to virtually any kind of traffic pattern you could think of. Um, so you could respond to a threshold of bytes like I did for the camera one. But you could also say, if I see any device that's closer than negative 50 dBm in power, so within a certain range. And if you see that, then do something. Um, or you could focus on a particular MAC address. Um, so anyway, one example plugin is, imagine that you want to deauth attack. Um, let's say you really hate Apple, and you want to deauth every Apple in range. Um, well, that's that's a traffic pattern. You know, you can you can look at it based on uh, the the uh, you know because we do the lookup for the vendor uh, based on the OUI. Um, so we can look that up and say, okay, that's an Apple device, and so respond. You know, uh, so let me demo that. So it's just, <clears throat> I don't know if there's any Apple devices within range, but, oh, it looks like there is. Um, so everyone it sees that it gets all the data on, it will deauth, and we should see that, ha oh, there we are. Deauthing's on. Probably. <laughs> um, so we, shall, we, we won't leave that running for very long. Um, but it's, so how many of you guys have tried to do a deauth with Aircrack before? Okay. So uh, if you've done it, you know that you have to specify like the BSS ID, you know, the know that it's on, MAC address, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so what if you deauth someone? Well, they, probably they'll jump over to another node, and then you'd have to do another scan, fill in the information, launch the attack again. again. So this does that kind of automatically, because um, it's, you know, every time something pops up, it's gonna just respond. Um, so, you know, if you have it looking for a particular MAC address, It'll pop up anywhere, and then Tracker Jacker would, <laughs> you know, deauth it. Um, so don't run that for very long, and if you do, maybe limit the power. So you can do this based on the power, so say only within some range. Actually, I think I did that for, so it probably didn't deauth people outside of this room. <laughs> um, but that's an example of, you know, having a traffic pattern and then being able to respond to it. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to show you a different demo as well. So this one, um, this one's not very useful. Um, it's kind of, it's more to demonstrate what the uh, plugin API is kind of capable of. So this is kind of just showing, you know, the top X devices and that in terms of closeness. Um, so that's kind of what like Aircrack does. So it's not new, interesting functionality. But I thought it was kind of cool because it kind of shows you can do, you can do quite a variety of different types of things with Tracker Jacker with the plugins um, if it's based on traffic patterns. Um, and let's see. 
Yeah, I'll demo. Uh, one, one other demo. Uh, this one is, um, I want to demonstrate what a really simple, so this plug in here, um, count apples. So this, you know, it basically just says every time I see an Apple computer um, unique that's unique, then print it out. So it's, it's doing something kind of useful. You know, even, even for a really small plugin, it's doing something kind of useful. And it's kind of a really simple example you could work from. Oh, actually, I had modified this to show other people. Um, I actually put a power range on that. So let me see. I actually want to see what it is if I get rid of that. Ah, there it is. Yeah, that's more. That's that's more like it. And it, this is actually a really short range um, antenna. Um, like a so, I think I mentioned it, but uh, the output file. You know, it's um, it's a YAML file. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of cool because it's um, it's both the database for Tracker Jacker as well as the human readable output, but it's also kind of the interop a and interop because you know you can easily par write a program that parses um, YAML. Actually, let me see if I have that still. Have you guys seen the uh, Marv was here Wi-Fi? No. Uh, so this guy named, so I think it's like this, this running joke. Someone told me about it, but. Um, people like have this network and it says Marv was here, like a lot of variants of it. So I was we were programmed to filter Marv out because I was wanting to know how many SSIDs there were. Uh, is it? So yeah, there was 50 Marv SS, SSIDs. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I wanted to show that because, you know, this is just an example of what a strip would look like that could parse the YAML. Pretty, well, reasonably short. Um, okay, um, I, I also wanted to mention environment. Um, so I have not run this on Windows. Um, if you would like to see it on Windows, um, please submit a PR. Um, it's, it's got um, basic Mac OS support, and, uh, but it's mostly Linux. Um, so it does run, some of the basic stuff runs on Mac, but it's mostly been tested on Linux. So Kali, Ubuntu, um, Raspberry Pi. Um, and then as far as adapters go, um, typically it's better to use an external adapter, as most of you probably know, for this kind of stuff. Um, I really like the, uh, like there's this one I have, uh, the Panda PAU09, uh, and the 07 is nice too. Um, but it's, uh, you know, they're both small, uh, and they're both dual band, and they both, they all, they work with Linux without configuration, and they support like injection and monitor mode, which is nice. Um, and then as far as, um, as far as takeaways, Um, you know, it's interesting to look at wireless again and realize, oh yeah, even though we have this concept of net, private networks and all of that, it's still, it's, it's just radio ultimately. And there's only so much you can do with radio, to, to conceal radio waves. Um, you know, they, the protocols have to be, are written in a way where they have to have that, some, some of that information public. There's not, you know, a good fix for that. Um, it's also um, a takeaway is it's, it's really trivial uh, to track you ba based on your Wi-Fi. Um, most of your smartphones, you know, if it's on Wi-Fi, they're broadcasting their MAC address everywhere you go. Um, and I think there was a, a Snowden reveal about the government doing that. Um, and I think it came to light recently maybe um, uh, stores are doing that to track people or something like that. Um, but it, it really is not like a theoretical attack, and so very simple. And really difficult to prevent. 
um, you know, you can, you can keep your Wi-Fi off when you're traveling around, and that's going to cut down on being tracked where you're at. But, like, you know, if you, if you connect with your phone to your home Wi-Fi, um, every time, if someone was looking, you know, they could see if you're there or not with a high confidence. Um, I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's just annoying because there's, really, there's not really something good to do about that. <laughs> there's not a good fix. Um, also, as I said, you know, it's kind of cool. There's actually interesting information that can be attained um, even at layer two. Um, we have this, uh, or there's this new tool, Tracker Jacker. Um, feel free to try it. Negative feedback is welcome, as well as positive. Um, and if you write any cool uh, plugins, you know, give me a PR and we'll add it in. Um, and I think that's it. Um, so thank you.